Comfortable? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, here we are six years later. Sorry about the delay, everybody. Uh, everybody's a little older, a little wiser, a little happier, a little smarter. Uh, the last that you saw on the video was grandma and grandpa talking about their childhoods up to approximately age 18 or so-ish. Yeah, she, we were married by then, by the time she was 18. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Yeah. So what we have to do right now, mm -hmm. and then, but you have to raise your right hand. Go ahead. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? As I remember it. Oh, God, that should be pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> that was a good end to them, Tony. You're getting better. The background noise, we really need you guys to keep it down because it just even the slightest. Wait, yeah, even the crinkle. That's, yeah. Actually, it, it, if you act up like that, we're, we, have, we will have to ask you to leave the set. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, you need to speak up a little bit because the only mic I have is the one. Oh, okay. So, so we know about your life and childhood in Portola. We want to start with when did you first meet mom? Or, or hear about her, or when did your knowledge of her first come about? That is something that you'll have to merge the two stories, because we have different, thought, different thoughts. My first thought, and it could have maybe be incorrect, is that... Um, <laughs> that she used to come in town with a uh, with a cook to pick up meat orders and stuff like that for the for the Mount Tomba. I, I, I didn't even know she existed at that time. Did they come <clears throat> did they come to your uh, market to your market? Yeah. They, okay. They purchased from us. And uh, this one day I can't remember what day it was. But I know it was any day but Sunday because I worked all six days. So, <laughs> is she asleep yet? Not yet. Not yet, okay. So She's hanging on your every word. <laughs> she isn't clenching a fist yet either. That's so, a good sign. Uh, so I'm, <clears throat> I'm working behind the counter, the meat counter. And it's very lovely. <laughs> you want my thoughts, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I want your first impression when you saw her. That wow, she's cute. She's a little chubby. Okay, <laughs> I said, this <laughs> which is true. And she had on this white turban. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was really a dish towel. <laughs> was it really a dish towel? Yeah. On your head. Oh, yeah, these yeah, it used stuff. to be fashionable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I thought I had been watching too much news. <laughs> she came in and said, is Sam here? I said, no. I, I, I don't know what I said, whether the case was true or false. So that was pretty much it. And then after that, there may have been some other things in between there because I never was really absolutely clear like, like I am on most of the things how it goes down that way. We, so that was it. The cute girl come in the shop and she said, is Sam there? And I says, no, because evidently he wasn't. So that's it. You cut right there. But Delmer which was my buddy, you know, in the past films, was uh, very attracted to Lilas. And they were both sports-minded, Lilas and Joan. And they had, they won the series or something that they were in. Now, correct me if I'm incorrect. Yeah, okay. in, in what sport was it? Softball. 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 So they, they had won the championship. So Delmer went to the to the to, to the to the party that, that with Lilas. And he told me about Lilas and that she 
I might go back. I thought Sam was her husband. Okay, so, gotcha. So, the only and, one... So how old was he approximately when, when you first met her? 16. But okay, you know, she, she, but they were married early. <laughs> you could have been married at 16 back then. Well, I, I didn't know she was only 16. Oh, so okay. she didn't look period 16. She could have been 18, 19, 20. Okay. Uh, so Delmer went to the party with Lilas. And he told me about the party and this, and she has a, a cute sister. Uh, so close that. Okay. Then, um, at the time, I had a car. But Delmer didn't. I had my 1949 <coughs> Fleetwood Chevy that I bought myself. So he needed a ride because the old car he had was not working right. So I took him down there and, and they introduced me to this young lady here. Uh, and I don't know if there was a set up there. You know when it happened to me. So these bits come back to me. I think we went upstairs. And played records. Did you recognize her from the market? Yeah. Okay. Played it on this funky little uh, uh, record player. And uh, let's see. So then we played there for a while, and then she got off work. I know this won't be quite. She got off work later, but she worked. She worked in the. Uh, she worked in the uh, um, well. She worked at, at, at Mount Tom. Okay. So when she got off of work, we uh, decided to go for a ride in my car. Just the two of you? No. With oh, with, no. with Delmer and Lilas. Delmer, Lilas, okay. and our chauffeur. Which was uh, uh, what was it? Sap. Who's our chauffeur? Oh, it was Willow. Willow Sapp. Willow Sapp. Mm -hmm. So she chauffeured, she chauffeured, chauffeured us, you know, for the ride or something. And we were playing music on the radio. In those days, radios were terrible. The reception was questionable. So we parked off the side of the road where this kind of an open area with this great big yew tree and we got out and started dancing. Um, now I don't know what the scenario was exactly at that point. I must have asked her for I don't know if I asked her for another date or Brandon or we took another ride down there. But somehow we got together. I'm not sure of all the details. Okay. <clears throat> Let me stop it right there from, from that point back. <clears throat> and let's get your take on the same. Do you remember that first visit to the, to the market? Vaguely. Well, <clears throat> but uh, I don't remember. A short little stocky bald guy? <laughs> <laughs> um, but after that, I thought he was delivering something to Mount Tomba. For some reason, anyway, he stopped at Mount Tomba. With Leo. What? With Leo. Oh, with Leo. Leo Betzer. Betzer? And he had this hat, hat cocked back on his head, and he sat down to play the piano, and I thought, oh, man, is he cocky. <laughs> So I reminded him of that. Do you remember what I he played on the piano? No. Just, no? Just some Could you even like play the piano? Or no. No. Oh, no. Okay. I mean, Birch. played like chopsticks or something <laughs> okay. like that. I mean, you walk in. And Cigarette hanging out of his mouth or anything like that? Or? <laughs> Do you remember the dancing? Yes. Do oh, you? Yes. Oh, yes, we did. Was that, that common for... That's all I mean, we had it to sounds do. like something that I would see out of a movie. That's all we had to Pulled do. over, getting out of the car. And, yeah, that's right. We danced every day. Yeah. And since I was such a fantastic dancer, she just yeah. When you... Go ahead. I remember something about a basketball game. You went to a basketball game where there was some championship where 
you went to Quincy or there was something about a basketball game. You met a basketball game or no? That's no. That's something I have no recall on. How about you doing? Mm -hmm. What did do you remember the meeting <clears throat> that he spoke of just before the dancing began at the hall or the celebration for the softball? Do you remember your first impression of him? No, I didn't go to the party. Oh, you, oh, you did. Oh, you picked them up. No, I didn't pick them up either. See, Delma went to the party with Lilas. Okay. Then he came home. Okay. And told me about Lilas and her pretty sister. Okay. And he wanted a ride to Mount Tomba because his particular vehicle was not working. Okay. Right. So, <clears throat> so you drove him to Mount Tomba. Yes. And there you picked up the gals. I, I I drove there in my father's car. Okay. What was your first? Your father's car. Your father didn't have a car. But <laughs> that was one of your impressions. Oh yeah, it was my impression. Oh, she thought it was because she well, didn't think a, a guy like you could have a brand it new. It was a brand new 1949 Chevrolet. Okay. And she thought it was my. Which is all right. I, it didn't make much okay. difference. So she thought you were from the same side of the tracks as her. <laughs> I don't think uh, up there there there's you don't have the <clears throat> class distinction except for a few uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Prisses. It, yeah. You know clicks. Yeah, clicks in all sorts. So how about second date, third date? When yeah. did you start to get serious? After the dance. After the dance After the dance the, was it, yeah. Yeah, you knew? He could dance. That was it. Yeah. So um well, I'm sure that you think too that there's a lot of details and stuff like that. But how long did you court? Before or after the breakup? Well, let's get up to that point. Yeah, before. <laughs> um, Delmer and Lilas and Joni and I came over to Reno to to to, to, to eat and dance, wasn't it? At that. Building right where they have Macasa Two now. Okay. Right there. That used That's to be Stoker and Four. What's that? Stoker and Four. Yeah. <clears throat> it used to be Lake Chef or something like that. So I guess we ate there, and then we went. To, they used to have a dance hall there on Commercial at Fourth Street, I think. So we would go over there, and uh, we went over and was dancing. It's a crowded thing. And. Uh, I looked down and Delmer looked down. And there was this tie classic fit on the big tie. So we both reached for it and I wore it. <laughs> the sad thing was, I lost it again. <laughs> I, I never really recovered that. Although this, that little incident was sort of important. Yeah, sort of important. Then I somewhere along the line, and I don't, I couldn't tell you the date. I couldn't tell you the occasion. I, what we did in those days to show that you were going steady was exchange class rings. So I gave her my class ring, and she gave me her class ring. And uh, so we were going steady. We used to. <laughs> We'd have dates. I would go home, and she would promptly sit down and write me a letter. And I would call her the next day, and then I would answer her letters, and then we'd go out again. And then, uh, and she would write every day. I would write every day. We'd call every each, you know, call each other every day. But her parents were not exactly what's the word I'm Excited? Thrilled. 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 They, no, they, they didn't like that little Mexican boy. That was you? Well, when he comes in, he <coughs> says, my name is Roberto Francisco Carnahan. <laughs> and my mother says, you're not going with any Mexican. <laughs> so it's his so, fault. Okay, dear. Uh, so, then we went steady for a while, but there was a lot of pressure on her mother's side. 
to dump me so she could date other things. Evidently, I wasn't up to her standards. And I think, well, I know, she didn't want to do it, to break up. But there was a lot of pressure from home. So this was very close to Thanksgiving, 1949. So she wrote me this Dear John letter. Of course, I don't like to accept things like that, but you know, who was a kid from the wrong side of the track and bought his own car? Uh, Roberto. <laughs> yeah, Roberto. <laughs> So she said, of course, I was, well. Do you remember reading that letter? Oh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Most of it. I mean, do you remember that feeling in your stomach? Of course. What do you think? <laughs> I have no feeling. <laughs> no, I just. But, again, it goes back to my bicycle. The bicycle that I never got, which didn't let me think too much of things like that. So I just accepted it, and that was it. So we broke up, and that was... But that we, didn't, we hadn't gone together that long. I'd say, what, six weeks maybe, or something like that. And uh, that was it, sort of. So, of course, we didn't call, we didn't write, we didn't, and we didn't do any of that stuff. Of course, I felt bad, you know. But I think I did call her to go out with me on my birthday. Um, she said, no, I, I, I can't because I have to work tonight. So I accepted that, of course. And it was snowing that night. That was snowing that particular night. It was just a little light snow. And I got off at the usual time around 6 o'clock, because you didn't have an eight-hour day in those days when you worked. You had a five, you had a six-day week. Not 40, 60, Now you might work less than 40, but usually it was more than 40. So I'm walking down Main Street, and what do I see? What do I see? I see Joni, I think she was in the picture, with Sam. So, do you remember how that felt? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I guess I felt sort of bad that time. And then, um, Things get a little mixed up. So I uh, got drunk. I mean, I got road. I'm surprised I made it to Mount Tomba. <laughs> you drank and went to Mount Tomba? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I started honking the horn. <laughs> All that sort of stuff. And, uh, and, and Earl comes out, this big giant, you know, says, Get out of that blinky blink. Not get out of it. You're not wanted here. Get out of here. And you can tell your friend that we don't want him here. So I turned around and went back. Now, somewhere, I think, halfway between. Um, Mount Tomba and Portola. I had sense enough to pull off the side of the road for just a little bit, but I was in no condition to be driving. I guess that's my pain tolerance. Huh? That, that that happened. And so that that went on, and I was a little disappointed. Uh, she wouldn't come out. I don't, you're going to have to get her story, her side of that story, because I don't know too much about what went on. So, and we never had contact again after that, except I was in the movie, and I think I'd had a little bit more to drink, a little bit, not much, but I 
And it's just at one time that I got that bad. Uh, and I'm sitting in, the, in, the, in the, sitting in the movie theater with someone, I don't know if it was male or female, and Delmer came up and he said, he gave me this little package, this big nice package. I said, this is from Joan. Now oh, that made me feel good. So I opened it up and guess what it was? It was about the box, was about the square, about that high. It was a tie class. The just like the one, of just like the one I lost. <clears throat> and again, we didn't have contact after that. She didn't do that. We. So that you know that was it. We didn't touch bases again until January 1949. Well, Delmer wanted to go to Sierra, but wouldn't it? I say Sierra, where you guys had it? They had a shuffleboard. Shuffleboard was extremely popular at that time. And they'd have, it wouldn't take much to have a shuffleboard tournament. So her bar qualified for it. So, Again, it was that we used my car, my white 49 Chevy that I bought and paid for. <laughs> um, so, Delmer needed a ride to uh, Sierra or Satney, whatever it was from there, because he wanted to go over and see Linus. So I took him over. Now, I didn't necessarily know that she was going to be there. I didn't know that she was going to be there. In fact, I, I don't even know that I saw her until, until the guy that she drove over with was Chuck Best. He was a, one of those big, huge fiddle players. <laughs> the bass, the bass. And he was appreciably older than she. And her parents tried to hook up with her, tried to have her hook up with him so bad for no other reason than he was, would be an asset to the bar. He played the film, he played, you know, he, he played like it would have benefit the bar. So evidently, and I'm not sure what the occasion is, she can fill this into this as only as I remember, she was mad. She can get mad sometimes. And she was mad. She said, can I get a ride home with you guys? I said, well, sure you can. So when we were ready to leave, I think I mentioned to her, was ready to leave. So, uh, Lila's never got a back seat, and then she got up in the front seat with me. That was January 29, 1949. I don't know if I said that before. That's the day that Dilmer's father died. You know, so he liked the they were like the moon consoled, consoled. So when we got back over to Mount Tama, what did we do? Honk the horn and drive up and down the screen and shout again. <laughs> Went upstairs and played records and danced. Did her folks know? Well, yeah, they, they you know they change here, change there. And after that, I you know, I talked to her and she so we got back together. And somewhere along the line, of course, we gave each other our, our I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we gave our class rings back. So somewhere along the line, uh, I said, I said, you know, if I wasn't buying this car and have that, I'd ask you to marry me. So evidently I did ask her, and evidently she did say yes which was great. And so, this was actually a short court, a courtship, courtship when you think of how, when we got married, when we met. So, we decided to um, get married. Everything was squared away. We came over to Reno on July 4th, 1950. 
to pick out some wedding, you know, wedding stuff. So we went down in South Virginia Street, which was a lot different than this today. They had jewelry stores and, 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 and restaurants and all of that sort of stuff. So we stopped in at one of the jewelry stores on South Virginia and picked out this wedding set. I wasn't even quite sure what it looked like. She may remember. So we told the guy, well, we'll make, we'll make a down payment. But I want to look around for you. So she went up with her hand. So on the corner of uh, 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 center and first, right there where the theaters are now, was a sort of a department clothing store. So we went upstairs. I used to remember the name of the place. But we went upstairs and looked at the jewelry and we saw this. Cute little set. It had uh, it had a, di a little tiny diamond and a, 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 you may have seen. Do you, do you have it on? No, no. no a so heart, a, a ruby heart on both sides. So we both fell in love. That's it. She liked it and I liked it. So then we went back to the to South Virginia and got our deposit. What well, federal deposit? Federal. Okay. Uh, Federal Department Store, and we picked up that set. So she put she put on her engagement ring, and uh, and I don't know where she who kept the other one. I don't know whether I kept or she kept. It. So Calpine used to be quite. Calpine used to be. What am I stepping up? Yeah, you want a drink? What's that? Do you want a drink? No. I was, I was wondering about that too. Calpine was a spot that a lot of people went on weekends. They had this nice big swimming pool. And where, is it, I, I, where is that located now? Because I see it. My Just before you get to Quincy, you take a left. You That's if you, know, if you go that way. But Calpine is, uh, if you go up 80 and make a right hand turn. A trucky. Sierraville way, go, down 89? Over that way. Uh, I don't know. Anyway. 10 or 15 miles off the highway, uh, but it was there. So we went over there, and one of the uh, fellows that used to uh, spend a lot of time at Mount Tamba was also a piano player, so he played there on the weekend. So we went over and uh, celebrated that, you know, our, our wedding. I, I mean, our engagement. And then the next day, the next day was probably I'm going to say a Sunday, but I'm not sure because maybe I took a day off and only worked six days that week. Um, and we went to Mount Tama. And <laughs> we, Joni went in and showed her mother this engagement ring. <laughs> and she says, You're not getting married. I don't know what transpired after that. So we accepted for what she said. Then <laughs> we went in to show to Earl, and he says, what's that? <laughs> they were living in denial. <laughs> I seem to be rambling, just I don't know if you're getting anything out of this or not. No, it's all good. Yeah, very okay. very coherent, um, actually. Right on. So <clears throat> yeah, it's good. We decided on a date. We decided on one in August. Julie's mother couldn't make it. They were having a tournament of this side of the other. We set one for September. Well, that won't work because of Labor Day and we're busy that time of year. I just don't have time to, to, to get it done. October comes. So, I don't know if we talk to your mother as a pair or you talk to her. I probably get you talk to her by yourself. And Joni says, Mother, she says, we're going to set a date in October. Now, either it's going to be here at Mount Tomba, or Bob and I'll just go to Reno, like everybody else in there. So we were able to set the date October 29th. And pretty much from there on, it was, 
what do they say if the, the history or something like that. Yeah, so that's uh, I don't want to go rambling. No, that that's good. Too much. <clears throat> that's a good spot on the. On that's the, a good spot to, to on the same thing. To go over so, to mom. Mom's version. Yeah, mom's version. Well, speak up, Judy. <laughs> Uh, is that pretty much that's, it? That's pretty much it. I, yeah. I think the only thing that I'm wondering, and I'm sure the people that watch this is do, is <clears throat> what actually happened on your side with your folks, what they, th what they thought of him, things you had to go through, um, what made you decide to give that tie clip back to him or find one for him, you know? Well, I kind of, well, I saw the tie clip and I thought, Oh, there's an opening okay. to make to make friends again. And so you wanted to rekindle. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Huh. And um, but his story was as accurate as I can remember. It's right. been a long time. Ago. <clears throat> when do you remember the conversation? When what transpired before you wrote the Dear John letter? Or your Bob letter. Oh, I don't remember. Don't remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you remember writing the letter? No, I don't. Really? You want to see the letter? I don't remember writing is what I'm saying. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have it? Close? No. Sort of, but you know, it's just hard. Okay, well, if that's if, I, I, if I know she didn't want to write it, but yeah, I, I do. How, how did you send the letter? Did, did you postmark it? Did you give it to Delmer to give to him? Or I remember? No, she probably, uh, uh, I don't know. She, I, I'm just trying to think how it transpired whether she, I went down there for a date or something and she gave it to her. Okay, what about <clears throat> so you sent him the letter? Um, did you think about him after that? Oh, oh sure. Oh, yeah, sure. a lot. And he didn't mention the the car wreck he had. No. On the way home from Tomba, what was that? That's right. I completely forgot. Yeah. Um, I usually would leave Mount Tomba because she had to work between two and three o'clock in the morning. So this one night, I decided to leave early, maybe 10 o'clock, and I'm going down Highway 70, and I went to sleep. And in those days, there were no guardrails or anything off to the side, you know, if you went off to the left, then you went left, you went off to the right, you went right. And, and I've probably asked you guys this question before. Um, thank goodness for necking knobs. Mm. Now a necking knob was a knob that you put on the on the um, steering wheel so that you could do all kinds Suicide of stuff. Knobs. With, that's right, Suicide. that's right, you can do all this stuff with one hand. Or, the right, whatever happened. So I went off to the highway on the left. That's good because had I gone off to the right, That's the riverside, the snow, the story would have been a lot different, I think. So I'm turning that wheel just, just back and forth, back and forth. It seemed like interminable, interminable amount of time. But finally I came to a sudden stop. <laughs> oh yes, that was a sudden stop. What happened was I went, I was so lucky because I, when I was in one of my turns and went off, I went straight into this huge boulder. My boss was going to take and get down there and show it to you. So I ran into that huge boulder. It, uh, I wasn't hurt very bad. I was, my face was scratched one side of the eye, I forget. But I hurt my shoulder a little bit because what happened when the car wrecked, 
Well, when the car hit this boulder, I went forward because we didn't have seat belts in those mm -hmm. I, I think they might have been optional or they didn't have them in those days. My shoulder hit the... Uh, I don't know if you know what the uh, dash of a 49 uh, Chevy looks like. It's pretty sturdy. Well, I hit it hard enough to bend it. You know, I made a V-shaped bend. That's about what I suffered. So there I'm sitting there, and actually when my lights are on, the cars are running, my cars are running. My cell phone wasn't working. <laughs> so, and there, was, and there wasn't a public phone close by. So I'm sitting there. A couple of cars go by, and there's finally somebody stopped. They had just come from Mount Tom. They said, well, I thought I saw your car, and then they could see that I had it. It didn't look like I had an accident, because there I am, parked straight in, lights on, car running. I mean, it wasn't running, but uh, so they stopped, and I told them what the story was, and I asked them if they would take me into Portola. Uh, of course, I went to Delmer's house. Now, he had a good car down by this time. He had a 49 also, but I think he had a Bel Air. I told him what the story was. He said, oh, you're kidding. And I said, no, no. So I guess we got the wreck room, went out and got the wreck room, took it back to the, uh, uh, to the body shop, which was also the uh, Chevrolet dealer, and they took care of all those things. And uh, that was pretty much it as far as, that, as far as the accident was concerned. Now, we had planned on, because of this wreck in the, you know, the small town, you see those movies and things like this, you know, well, my dog, it might take two weeks, it might take a month, <laughs> but we get to the hard point. So, well, they were good friends, you know, they were all you know, neighbors and stuff. So we had planned, because of this, we, we planned on using uh, Buster Pearson's 49 Mercury to go on a hunt up the boy, this is great, the water neat truck. Well, the day before our wedding, which would be a Saturday, they called us and said, your car is ready. Oh, shit. No, I won't get to drive Buster's car. <laughs> But I told him what the situation was, nice people. He said, Bob, go ahead and take it. He says, you drive it now for your honeymoon, which was supposed to be three days. It wasn't. I'll tell you why. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he says, sure, go ahead and take it. So we, we did get to use his car. And uh, so I had the car, and we were going to up. Spend our honeymoon over here in Reno. We made reservations at the uh, Golden Hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, <clears throat> the one that burnt down. Segway right there. <clears throat> so we're we're we we're at the day before your wedding, right? That's where we are right now. Now back to you. Did your parents ever actually say it's okay if you go out with the? Roberto? No. Or you just kind of started just, and just, just figured, started. you know what? Yeah, uh, it was one of those things that it just worked back. <clears throat> I mean, after So did I, you tell him you were dating him or you just brought after him? I, yeah, he just... Well, she she wasn't, they weren't sure from week to week who she was dating. Okay. Get out of here. <laughs> so what about Earl? Did he, after he yelled at you when you were getting all crazy in front of us? No, I think how it worked. Just kind of got over it like everybody sure, does they, eventually. And they learned to appreciate me because... When I went down to pick her up to date, I washed the dishes. Washed dishes. Dry okay. The dishes. So you got to talk to him a little I, bit? And no, not yeah. necessarily, but I was points. there in that capacity. Score and, points. Uh, yeah, so I was an asset to the inn. Okay. So that was good. But it was worth it because of what? Food. Free food. God, these hamburgers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> potato salad. Just. We actually remember those hamburgers, too. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. Yep. 
and I haven't tasted one like it since. Mm -mm. I don't know, there's something about that hot bun and it just... It was the grease on the bun. And the grease, I was thinking there's like a grease or oil on the of bun course, and, it just, took. and it had just mustard and, and onions. Onions. And just... They were a little cat. Oh man, they were so good. So what about, what's, what about the fiddle player? What was his name? It was a bass player. Bass player. I call him fiddle. Oh, I don't oh. even want to mention his name. Is he a big doof? Chuck Best. He was a... Wasn't well, the best, huh? He had to take me to my prom. Oh. No, I didn't know that. My mother. Yeah, he did. No, I didn't. Oh. You do now. No, I'm mad. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm mad. So let's stop here and pick it up from just before the wedding. Like, wedding plans and then... Or no? Yeah, she set it up and asked him With and mom? everything. I, didn't, I had I nothing to say about it. Tired. About what? Do you got, how the much prom. juice you got left in you? The what? Juice? How much well, juice you got okay? left in you? Me? Yeah. Is this a good stopping point? Yeah. Yes. Good segue. We up to just before the wedding. We can stop. Yeah. Next time we, you can tell about any. Then we'll go wedding. into the wedding. Yes. Yeah. Because we know there's some stories there, and then we'll go from there to San Francisco, and. Okay. That would be a good. Story. Well, one day when my mother wanted wanted me to wait tables, you know, I was from San Francisco. I never waited tables or anything. But before you moved to Mount Tom. So I'm at Mount Tomba now. Right. And I'm standing in the kitchen looking through the glass door, the little window, mm -hmm. and she gave me a shove into the dining room. <laughs> and that was my initiation <laughs> into wedding well, table. Was there the princess or waitress. She made good tips. I'll, I'll tell you about those two when, the next day when I come back. Okay. It's amazing, though. I mean, just <clears throat> how life's turned out, and here we are today. Just, well, yeah, yeah. just, and just, just all that's happened from you—the kids, mm -hmm. the grandkids, the, just all—and what will happen from your own. Yeah. And uh, as we discuss often, Joan says, and I says, if anything, anything in the past had changed, the future would not be what it is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you take the good with the bad, the bumps. And, and I've mentioned this before. Are you happy or content where you are right now? Yes. That's the question you ask. And then you say, well, all of that stuff behind me is worth it. You know, let's see though. I think, I think, I think her trial period is over. I think okay. I can make a, uh, you know, I think I can make a decision. My okay. trial, okay. my yeah. trial period. Yeah. And uh, mom's just, trial period? The, yeah. She, 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 she got the part? Yeah, her probation she period is over the part. <laughs> I, I, I finally figured out that she has served her probation period admirably. <laughs> and I think I'll keep her around. Good. All righty. And you should be that lucky. So, that's all. Same report. Cool. And, uh,
get the Instagram Let your people know that it's a minute. Okay. Yeah. No phone calls. Nothing. Okay, we're on, take the I phone. want just you people here. Take the phone off the hook. Take the phone off. All right. Go Can't ahead stop. and do it any way you want. Okay. Mm. At the end, you have all this stuff. Okay, I'll call. We're not and if you don't have love, and you don't have correctness, you have nothing. Nothing. That's a uh, okay. 50 years of collecting shit. Okay? Now that we've got that over. We just want to answer it. Okay. Okay. You just watched the video of my dad well, a couple days ago and saw his stories of his life and you know he had the he put all the, the sugar and spice on it so now we want some of the stuff that he did not he may it. not have told us okay so uh, going back as far as you can uh, what are some stories that you remember that you, that you think would be funny or or something okay uh, when I was uh, you used to play golf with uh, your dad and Carlo. Some of the stories uh, I could tell you, we started out once a week over there at uh, Skyline Boulevard over there in the uh, uh, golf course over there by Bayshore Boulevard, over where I used to work at, at the Sled Lock. We used to go there on early Saturday morning at 6 o'clock teeing off. And uh, we always tried to put, uh, put a good Pretty good days, nice weather, and we tee off and everything. Of course, we had our slices and bananas. And Carlo, well, he was good, and he had a real good temperament, good attitude and stuff. And I always kind of cheat a little bit, you know. And, uh, and they say it took you seven shots to get to the t uh, to the green. I said no, it did not. We'd always argue, Dad and I. And uh, Carlo said, I don't care what you get. I said I know what you got. I ain't arguing with you. <laughs> And so this went on uh, week after week, and and so there was a couple of times uh, your dad was having a bad day, and uh, we came to this one uh, hole, I forget what it was, and had a, a, some uh, sand traps and some uh, little water and all that kind of stuff. You had to go over to the water and a little pond-like, and uh, he, uh, he was having a bad day that day. And he was very, very frustrated. A little bit. He had a bad attitude. It's more or less to say. And and I, uh, he got, he, the ball went into into the water. That just made his day. And he has that. <laughs> took that club. And he took the whole thing. <laughs> right in the trees. And he says, Doug, go get the club. I said, I ain't climbing that fence and going and get the stupid club in the tree. I said, I, said, I might be a little uh, fast and all that stuff, but I ain't no rang <laughs> And uh, so there was one golf club down the drain. And then another time, I uh, came to that same hole another time. And then and again, this time, he just took the whole club and just busted it, <laughs> threw it in the water. And... Uh, so those were the, some of the incidents we did and we used to go golfing all the time. Then it got pretty serious where we'd, we'd go to uh, twice, maybe three times. We'd go on Saturday and then when we get off work we'd go uh, golfing at another golf course over on Skyline Boulevard down in Pacifica. And we played golf down there. And we played for about an hour or two, we played about eight or nine holes. And uh, Carl would go with us and everything. But Carl was through the whole thing. He, had, he was real good temperament. And your dad and I, we all seemed like, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I loved him and everything. I knew it was just playing the game. It's just very competitive and everything. And, uh, of course, you know, I've always kind of, if I said, it took me uh, 12, 12 shots to get to the hole. And your dad always said, uh, it took you 13, 15 shots. Don't you remember we did this and this and this? He was over here and over there and here. And I said, and we'd get an argument. And Carlos said, I know what you got. 
I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to put it down to keep scores. And uh, I said, no, it didn't. And so this goes all the time. And then most of the time we had good spirits, good attitude. And uh, some of the uh, times we went golf and everything, we had good times and uh, overall. And, and there was, back then it was only $3 for nine holes. And we get done by uh, approximately about 8.30. took us about an hour and a half to play nine holes. And uh, and we get back and everything. Carl and I would drop your dad off and and uh, we'd go back to the house. And, and then we went our separate way for a couple of weeks, you know, uh, a week or so. And those were real nice. What about the pie story? Oh, the pie story. Very good. Yeah, your Carl and I, we used to uh, come over every Friday night. And we'd play cards with your mom and dad. And, uh, and I'd always bring a piece of pie or something. And I'd come out there with some donuts and stuff. And, and your mom was my favorite. Let's say you had the old fashioned plays and Bob liked pies. And I did too. And Carla did too. So, and, they, and I always liked blueberry. And sometimes I'd bring apple pie. So this one Friday, I came over. And, uh, and I said, Let me, uh, Joan, let me cut the pie, okay? So I went over to the kitchen sink. and the countertop and, and I got the in my mind I said, you know I bought this pie. I says, I'm gonna cut my slice just a little bit bigger. And I'm a little hungry. And uh, I didn't know your brother was watching. So I put everything on the sauce and everything, right around to everybody. And your brother says, Hey, Doc, what gives here? I said, everybody got their slices, but why is your piece of pie bigger? Because I bought the pie. So I deserve to have a bigger pie. I don't think so. So he did, before I could say Jack Robinson, he grabbed all the plates. And the mom grunted. And she knew what was going on. He went immediately over to the kitchen sink, flips the garbage disposal switch. <laughs> and the mom and I and, and Carla, and I said, No. What did you do about that? I said, That's fine. I said, I can just go get me another blueberry pie and I would eat the whole thing by myself. <laughs> and so sure enough, the very next day, I went home, cooked the pie, and I used to live with Carla. And I cooked it, and I ate the whole piece of pie in one setting. And I called up your dad and mom, and I told I caught their dad, and he I said, hey, Bob, guess what? I got a piece of pie. What, what was it? Blueberry. Guess what I did? I ate the whole thing. <laughs> I said, put that in your pipe, you smoking bubba. <laughs> uh, that's funny. See, that's funny. I got mm -hmm. that guy. How about Mount Thomas stories? Do you have any good Mount Thomas stories? Oh yeah, I used to uh, go down there with him when we were uh, real little. And he used to uh, deliver the groceries and everything. And he'd visit your mom and I would uh, see uh, Ginger and Sugar. And I was always interested in playing shuffleboard and stuff. And then of course when we'd get in the afternoons and stuff, we'd go uh, swimming there, in the back of the Mount Thomas there. And it was a nice hole and everything. And, uh, those are the memories I remember. I used to look forward to going down with him, delivering groceries in different places. And, uh, and then shortly thereafter, uh, I heard uh, Bob proposed to your mother and everything. And uh, I wanted to be in the wedding and all that stuff. And me and Jackie and Loretta didn't get to be in it. And my sister Pat was in it. And uh, then that, uh, I felt kind of uh, left out, mm -hmm. so to speak. But your dad was real happy and everything, and I felt kind of, you know, I'm back at the behind the scenes and stuff. And because uh, I was real close with him uh, growing up and stuff. So my memories of Mount Tamba was all the uh, her mom cooking, her dad behind the bar over there, and meeting Sugar and Ginger and playing and all that stuff. And, uh, and then Sugar and was kind of the, the mother instinct type. And Ginger, she was more, I guess, my agent, so to speak. And we liked to play and all that stuff. And they were good memories. I like yeah. that Mount Tamba. How about when my dad? Uh, how about him and Delmer? What were those two? Uh, like? I can remember the times that I remember Delmer. And my brother uh, was in uh, uh, gymnastics, and he was always uh, very good at it, and uh, walking on his hands and what have you, walking up and down there. And I always had a very envy. And I'd always say, when I get bigger, I'm going to learn how to walk on my hands. And uh, he was an inspiration to me as far as gymnastics. And I remember the time when your dad and uh, Dalmer played football and stuff. 
and then played in band, the marching band and stuff, in the uniform. And that's what I always told myself, that when I get older, I'm going to join the band and march and all that stuff. And, and, uh, and I remember a little bit when Dom was, uh, was dating Lilas. And, uh, and, I, and uh, I thought that was neat and everything. And then uh, driving his, uh, I believe he had that 49 Chevrolet. And uh, he'd bring your mom up and, and visit us for the first time. And uh, of course my mom and dad, they was sober minded and all that stuff. And visited us in the, at the, in the living room. And uh, he'd done that several times before they moved back to, down to San Francisco. They were good memories, real yeah. good positives. And I thought your mom was very pretty and everything. And was very young, very positive, good people. Do you remember much about their wedding? No, because I wasn't were, there. I was, oh, seven, even, I was, I was 17. And your mother was 17. Oh, you, your didn't dad even, was, you didn't even go to the wedding? No, me, Jackie, and Loretta didn't go. And uh, and Jackie, I mean, Pat was the only one who was invited from our family. And uh, I think, I'm not positive now. I have to ask Jackie or Pat. Uh, I don't know if my mother and dad was there or not. And uh, but then when I found out they got married and everything, and of course, I... And, First, I was a little bit apprehensive, but I was You were excited. seven, you said? Yeah, I was okay, seven. Yeah. Pretty young. Your mom was 17, brother, and my brother 19. And uh, of course, they lived down there in that. We lived on the, the east side of Portola, and they lived on what they call the, the west side of Portola. And, uh, and your brother would be, I mean, my brother would be uh, working at the store. Me, Jackie, and Loretta would go down there and visit your mom and that thing. And uh, I can always remember coming into the garage and we'd, Dad had a big old pile of blocks. And we'd have to get all the blocks, me and Jack and Loretta, stack up the blocks against the wall. And uh, we'd try to be as neat as possible and all that stuff. And your dad always say, well, if you do a nice, neat job, I'll pay you. Of course, back then, uh, 15, 20 cents was a lot of money for us. And we'd go to the show for 20 cents. Mm -hmm. And then give you a quarter, and then you could get yourself a, a bag of popcorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are good days. Did and, you uh, go visit them at the market much? When oh, yeah. You did? Yes, I yeah. did. I remember when I used to uh, walk to school and stuff and get out. And I'd walk down to, from the school and come in the grocery store. And I'd always walk. Sometimes I'd come through the alley and come through the back door. And I'd see uh, Milo and Leonard and uh, my brother. Who had, uh, they had a kind of a, a machine here. Where you put all your meat and, and fat and all that stuff that's left over, and make hamburger. And it was on a stand here, you clamp it on the end of the table, uh -huh. and you grind it like this. And I thought that was fascinating. He'd be stuffing it in there, and, and he'd be grinding all that stuff. Then I seen him come over here and be going. It was fascinating, yeah. And, uh, it was, and uh, I liked that and watching him. He said, there'd be sawdust on the floor and what have you. And he said, And, uh, and I did that several times, yeah. and, uh, and of course, you know, shortly after, and they, they moved to San yeah. Francisco. Yeah. So when did you go to San Francisco to... to, to, to okay, um, see, I was 10 years old. There was a place called, down there by Gray Eagle and Blairson, down that area. You go up to the mountains. There's a lake called Gold Lake. We used to go up there every uh, summer with my best friend, uh, Sugar... Uh, does uh, her hair, uh, her hair, and her name was Eleanor, and her husband was named Frank, and he had a grandma named uh, uh, Grandma Eckers, and what have you. And we go up there swimming a lot, and camping, and uh, one day, uh, this one year, your dad came up. I was ten years old, and your mother was with him, and uh, he came and said, "You want to go to San Francisco?" So I said, "Great, love to." So I grabbed all my little stuff that I had in a, in a brown paper bag, put it in the back seat. And that's all excited, so we stopped at Mount Tumba and picked up sugar. And Ginger, she was crying, wanted to go and everything. Of course, um, your mama's uh, mom, your grandma, she held Ginger. So we went to San Francisco with me and sugar. And uh, we stayed for a couple weeks. And that was the first time that I was, was in a big house. It had running water, nice beautiful faucets, and a bathroom sink, and a beautiful tub. and. Carpeting and all that stuff and hold that thought one, one second. We're gonna check something on our camera here.
Yeah. Okay, you were at the furniture. The That's furniture? The first time you seen all that the f nice furniture? Uh, fresh my memory. Furniture. Talk about San Francisco, talk about uh, you were somewhere. Uh... Oh, God. Okay, we're in um, San Francisco talking about furniture and stuff. I know your dad, man, we, once in a while we'd be in, going down uh, Gary Street. And we'd be in different, looking at different places and furniture and stuff. Uh, we stop in and look and stuff like that. Uh, there was one time that uh, he was working, and he came and got me and said, "Jump in the back because I'm not supposed to be taking nobody. I'm going to uh, give you a little tour of San Francisco and stuff." And uh, in the Sears van? Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, this is. Uh, we're going to do a service call and stuff. I'll be in there and in and out for you. Can say Jack Robinson. And. Uh, he came and did the thing real fast, like came back, and we drove around San Francisco, and uh, I remember stuff like that. It was very positive. He was uh, entertaining me, and, because you know I'm by myself, you know, all day long, and trying to entertain myself, you know, when I come down and visit your dad, and my mom, and uh, when you're 10, 12, 13 years old, you gotta have to use your imagination, to find things to do, and uh, your dad, and mom was real good people. They was your mom was. Uh, very supportive and everything and when I was there and she uh, when I get up and your uh, dad would go to work and your mom would fix breakfast just like your wife and everything and uh, and I need my breakfast and I tell your mom I said well I'm gonna go outside and play and of course the library is across the street 37th Avenue and I go in and get lost for maybe an hour or two and I get bored and I come out and then I go down 37th Avenue at the bottom of the hill a couple of blocks down off of Andrew Anza Street there was a school down there and go down there and play ball with some of the kids that meet. And play ball with them, basketball, and then with a big tennis court, and I try to play tennis and stuff. Stuff like that when I come down and visit mom and dad. Yeah. Huh? And everything else. You forgot to tell us who you were in the beginning. Oh! <laughs> I'm Bob's brother, and my name's Doug Carnahan. And, uh, name? Douglas Raymond Carnahan. Birthday? Nah. December 3rd, 1942. Social Security number? No. Five, six, yes. seven, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, when uh, I was born in Portola, California in 1942, and uh, my first recollection, the memory of my brother, when I was down at the bottom of the hill, a place called Rock Arch. It was a gas station for many years. And I remember him having a bicycle. And uh, he would ride that to school. Of course, I was about three, so that would make him about uh, 13, 14 years old. And uh, oh. so uh, he'd come home, and I'd always look forward to it. Then he uh, took wood shop, and he uh, made me a, a <laughs> wagon completely off, out of so wood. Well. And the wheels were made out of wood. And to this day, oh, I wish I had that way. Because, because we and like most boys, you know, you always go up and down the hills. And of course, the, the road and everything was made out of gravel going down the hill. I broke one of the wheels and half of it was gone. And uh, as I remember, we never did get fixed. And of course, I had my sister Jackie and Loretta. And of course, they were envious. And I said, why are we getting a wagon? We want a wagon. Of course, you know, Bob favored me. You know, I was his little brother. And, uh, and we, I, of course, at a young age, I picked up on that. There was a bond there when I was a kid growing up. And uh, everything uh, my brother did, I always wanted to be like him. And uh, he was my hero. And uh, my mother combed my hair and stuff. And she dressed me and stuff. I said, I want to wear blue jeans like Bobby. I called him Bob. And I said, I want to wear blue jeans like him. And she'd always make say, oh, you want to do everything like Bobby. And I said, and I said well, he's my big brother. I want to do what he does. I said, I'm going to get, I'm going to get me a, a, a Model T Ford and all that stuff with a rumble seat and all that stuff. And I'm going to get a bicycle. And when I was eight years old, I got me a bicycle. And then uh, I went everywhere with that thing. And uh, of course, uh, your mom and dad would come up and they had a 1955 black Volkswagen before you, uh, before you guys were born and stuff. And, uh, and I loved that little Volkswagen. And uh, of course, that's when they took me down to Mount Tom and uh, that's why I, Seen Ginger and Shirley and stuff. Those are good memories. Mm -hmm. I always care, I cherish their memories. Anything else? Uh, I think that. Right it? Yeah.
Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, when we get the tape all done, I'll send you a copy. And oh, that that'd be great. Give it to your agent. Oh, yeah, and amen. Get some jobs. Oh, amen. Okay. Ran it on, and I want to say on behalf of, of myself and everything, and I said, it's a, it was a very good, it was a pleasure being here. And uh, really, yeah, you have a wonderful family, a wonderful wife, and a beautiful home here. And it was a pleasure being here. And I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. You're very welcome. Great. I love you. I love you too, bro. Okay. Great.